Okay, so the, one of the questions we have in today's webinar is about needles and just needles in general, um, how they work uh, on the machine, um, uh, the types you should have, and then just generally, you know, what should you use, how often you should use them. So generically, if you're buying needles for your happy embroidery machine, I'll look for the type um, DVXK5. Um, that's a universal designator for uh, the round shank commercial needles that are used on multi needle machines like uh, like uh, happy machines here. So, um, and also the most common needle size that we're using is a 7511. There are other sizes that are available that, that are, are, are useful for this, but the 7511 is the most common uh, for just about any application. So we'll just stick with that for, for the scope of this discussion. And um, so you'll see that size here, 7511. And then check with the manufacturer. This one is Gross Beckert, which we uh, prefer. It's a German-made needle. It seems to have the highest uh, tensile strength, um, torsional rigidity. So it will put up with a, it should break less. Um, and then the size is the 7511. 75 means the shank or the, the shaft, uh, excuse me, is 0.75 millimeters wide. So an 80 needle would be 0 0.80 uh, millimeters wide. A 65 needle will be 0.65. So this is about in the middle. And then also um, for the, the type, uh, this is a sharp point. And that's ge generally designated by the, um, um, that's generally designated by an RG that would be on here. So this may not actually be a sharp point needle. So in my box, uh, uh, my kit, um, I'll go and look through and find that RG designator that generally um, a, tells you the tip. FFG is generally um, ballpoint, but I know that sometimes I've changed that around. So here's one with a nice RG on it. So you can see the RG at the bottom indicating the sharp point needle. All right. And um, because they're round shank needles, the top, uh, the, the, sh the shank of the needle, which is the thicker upper part of that needle um, is round uh, and it can be turned any way versus, um, versus a needle for the home sewing uh, single needle world where this has a flat spot milled into it. And so the hole would have a flat spot um, in the hole so that you can only turn it a certain way. But commercial machines like this have a round hole and that's so that you can orient this any way you want to. You can turn it left, right, and put it in and believe me it makes a difference how you put it in so um, you want to identify the front of the needle and the back of the needle so you may already know from sewing experience like um, that um, the front of the needle has a groove that runs the length of the needle from the top of the shaft um, to the bottom and um, and it meets at the eye and then if you look at the side of the needle here um, if i can if this camera will focus well enough you can kind of see this is that um, the uh, side of the needle right here, um, there's, um, it's kind of cut out and that's the, um, that little cutout is called the scarf and that should face backwards. So um, now you can see the front and you can see that um, the, the eye of the needle is facing straight on and you can turn it, you know, left and right. That's turned this way. If I turn it this way, now it's facing the other way. So you want this to face um, the right, uh, to the right of center uh, when you're putting this into the machine. So you want to turn it so it's like that and push it, push it up all the way. So that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, no close-ups necessary uh, here, and I can't do this with the camera, but I will try and bring it as close as I can and just show you uh, to change the needle. You should not be afraid of doing this because needles can last anywhere from 10 stitches because it hits something when you hit start to you know over a million stitches uh, and more as long as you operate the machine well, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, or, the, in, or the needle doesn't encounter anything by accident. So, but either way, be ready uh, to change it out as a troubleshooting step at the very least. So let's pretend that needle one on this uh, machine um, is this one right here, um, needs to be changed out. So all you do is take a needle screwdriver, you'll have a white handled one that comes with um, your machine, um, and it's got just a small flat tip, I bought this as a, as a small screwdriver kit that you can buy at any uh, big box store um, and just loosen it. And when you loosen the screw uh, in the needle holding block, 
you don't want to loosen it all the way. Loosen it only about a half a turn to three quarters of a turn. So that's a half a turn. And that's loose enough that I can just pull the needle out, but it can hold itself in place. And that makes it easier when I put the replacement needle in. So I drop that needle out, set it aside. Um, and then I'm going to put my replacement needle in. Um, and you'll notice this one actually is gold colored. That's a titanium uh, needle. Uh, titaniums uh, versus steels, uh, we'll go over that in a minute, but just to let you know, because you can see the difference. So you can see I'm putting a new needle in. Here's the steel needle, here's the titanium coated needle. Um, but there, this is gonna be the same size 7511 sharp, just because I know that's what it was when I pulled it out of the box. I'm gonna try and orient it this way. Um, if, you don't, if, you want, if you don't want to use a tool, just orient it as best you can between your two fingers. I've got it front back and I've got it turned slightly right drop it into the, hold it like this so you can drop it into the eye of the presser foot and then down into it and then push it straight up into the end of the needle bar and just push it all the way up until it stops. Verify that the needle is slightly right of center and it is or dead on. Just make sure the eye is not slightly left of center. And then um, you can tighten that up again uh, and you're off to the races. So. Uh, once you've uh, tightened up the uh, once you've tightened up the uh, the needle with the screwdriver, um, make sure it hasn't shifted. So let me go ahead and just tighten this really quickly. And then just verify that it is still turned slightly right or or is dead straight on. Now, some of you may be wondering, uh, you may not feel comfortable handling it by hand or a couple different ways to do that, or you may have trouble seeing. Um, for example, I have to take my glasses off to look at this to see it in focus. Um, one of the tools that you can use is this is, um, you can buy this from TexMacDirect.com. This is called the Needle Ease. There's a website, NeedleEase.com, and this is a spring-loaded clamp. So I can pull back on that. And then there's a little pin that sticks out in, partially into this slot. And that pin is supposed to, to, to push into the groove of the needle. So if I want to hold uh, the needle, um, this will not only hold the needle, but since it's holding the groove of the needle, then it's holding it at a fixed angle. So I'm going to turn this needle so that the groove is facing this way towards the pin. And that way I know what angle I'm holding it at. I'm holding it straight out. Um, so as long as I feel this pin click in to the groove of the needle, I just turn it until I feel it snick. So then I know that this is straight on. So when I put this into the machine, if I want to angle it left, I just turn my lever left. If I want to angle it, if I want to angle it right, I turn it this way. So the way I'm holding the angle of the, the handle of the needle ease is the angle of the needle. So I kind of push it in as low as I can. It's holding it at that angle. Then I just kind of dip it into, and of course, let's remove this needle. Again, just doing the same procedure. We're going to replace the needle, but using the needle ease, we'll still drop this out. And just push this into the hole in the presser foot. Push it straight up. And again, I can control the angle of, of the needle by just pushing this left or pushing it right. So we want it about slightly right, about 10 degrees right. And um, just hold it there. As we're holding it there, we tighten it down. So it takes the guesswork out of it. There is some cost associated with this, but if this makes you feel more comfortable, Remember that changing needles is very important and doing it reliably is very important. So just find your way of doing it so that you can change needles reliably. Uh, and that's going to uh, dramatically lower the, uh, the, uh, the learning curve with operating your embroidery machines, which uh, leads us to uh, our second to the last topic, which are what are good operating habits? Somebody had uh, asked a follow on question as to um, as to how often am I going to have a bird needle? Uh, how often do things get scratched up 
that uh, I need to replace parts or check for this or, or do maintenance. So uh, generally the feedback we get from these machines is that you don't have to do much maintenance at all, uh, especially compared to some other machines. But again, it all comes down to um, su successfully operating an embroidery machine comes down to having a lot of little small habits uh, that you do as part of regular operating. So um, starting from the beginning, before you even get to the machine, uh, if you're gonna sew a job, there are three things that you wanna do to um, assure that the job is set up right for whatever you're gonna do. So um, number one is the garment. So whatever the job is, um, you wanna uh, make sure that the design that you have is made for that garment. So just because this design will sew on this doesn't mean I can take it and sew on a hat or a hoodie. Either a slightly different version has to be made for it or they need to modify the density or other settings for that so that it looks just as good on a hoodie or other type of garment. In the case of a hat, for example, the order needs to be sewn. Like this says, happy embroidery machines, but, um, and it may sew like following your common sense, H-A-P-P-Y, uh, and then Japan, J-A-P-A-N. But um, for a hat, you're gonna wanna sew J-A-P-A-N, then Y-P-P-A-H uh, for a hat. So um, have it digitized for the garment. Number two is pick the right stabilizer for the garment. Um, there are all kinds of stabilizers. So make sure you follow a lecture on that, a chart, uh, so that you know you're using the best stabilizer for this type, whatever type of material it is. And number three, pick the right hooping solution. There are all kinds of uh, the traditional hooping uh, inner and outer ring hoop works for most applications, but there are gonna be some extreme applications where something like a magnetic mighty hoop or uh, a gator style clamp will work better. So make sure you pick those things. So those three things will help you with setup alone. Now, when it comes to operating the machine, uh, number one is that you wanna leave it in a, as good a condition as you can uh, when you initially set it up and when you leave for the day. So that means that um, generally keep the machine as clean as possible, um, as reasonably possible, uh, because you never know when lint, dirt, um, will interfere with the flow of thread. Um, keep your machine in a humidity-free environment, no excess humidity. Um, and then also, you know, once you've threaded it up, followed our instructions, uh, one of the things we go over in our videos is make sure that once you pull the thread through, um, make sure that um, when you put it together, we'll assume that you've got it threaded through the head. Um, make sure that you've got all the threads tucked into the thread holding spring and clipped off. Um, because whatever, whenever you use the machine, you may not use all the threads, but the threads that are loose um, will be subject to vibration and they can tangle in the threads that you're using. So it's important that you have no loose thread tails. I can see a loose thread tail here um, and it looks like it's just too long of a trim. And so I just want to cut it. No loose thread tails. Anything hanging here should either be tucked up here or when the machine's done with it, it'll be tucked into these uh, plates behind it. Nothing loose here. Also with a bobbin case as well. Make sure that you follow the videos on how to load and set up the bobbin case so that the, every time you use this, um, don't just pull it out and look at it. Double check it, make sure it's loaded correctly. Put it in there according to the directions, um, counter or clockwise as you're looking at the back, do the tension flap and the slit, and then, um, Make sure that it, it's strong enough to hold itself up. And then finally, through the loop, little loop at the top. And uh, let it hang, uh, the tail hang maybe four inches or so down the front. And then reinsert it. And when you reinsert the bobbin case, make sure to put it in halfway. And then just when you push, make sure you feel that click. If you don't feel or hear that click, then it may not be locked in there. So these little things already will eliminate a lot of uh, unnecessary support calls that we get by the, just these good habits. Okay, so um, another operating habit I would do is check the threads that you're gonna use. So let's say that you're only, just to, for brevity's sake, let's say you're gonna sew only red today. So I'm gonna grab that red thread, wherever that is. And um, let's, and if you have not sewn with it recently, like if you weren't just sewing with it yesterday, Test it, pull it straight down from the eye of the needle and feel it. Make sure you've got some steady tension on there. Whether you know what the right amount of tension it is, make sure there's at least a steady tension. It's not getting stuck. 
make sure that your upper ten your lower tension wheel at the base is turning. And if you have a separate thread brake sensor wheel, make sure that's turning as well. Um, and uh, make sure it's smooth. And then when, if that all feels right, then um, you're halfway there. Then just release your tensioners to lift up on the, uh, the lower tensioner. You should feel it getting loose as you're pulling it, a uh, drop, let it, uh, and you should make sure it feels tighter. Then take the disc on your uh, upper tensioner, um, lift it up. Now that you feel looser, let it drop, make sure it feels tighter. Make sure that these are delivering the tension just by a few seconds of checking that. And do that for every thread that you're going to use for that day. You don't have to do it for all of them, but do it for every thread that you haven't just used yesterday. Um, and that will assure that the very first stitch that uh, you sew is going to be uh, just as good as the last stitch that you sew. And little things like snags or things that got tangled uh, that you can stop right now before you walk away and hit start and come back five minutes later and the machine's just been sitting there. So you're guarding yourself against unnecessary stoppages. And then um, the other things that you wanna do um, as far as um, learning to hoop correctly in a line, and then we'll show that in a separate video in this, this section here, um, but make sure you place your hoop uh, onto the arms correctly. Uh, they're nice and locked in. The arms, uh, when you attach them to the machine, make sure that, um, I know some people will teach us that these are thumb screws, but all, always tighten these more than your hands can tighten them. Not, you don't have to be a lot, but we've discovered that uh, too many of these are coming loose because they're just barely tightening them. And then this will shake a little like this, and then you have imprecise embroidery. So lock these on here. Uh, so when you tighten them, if you've got the cap kit, an, a great tool for tightening these is, um, is, a, is the clip from the cap kit because it doesn't damage the slot, just put it in there and then just tighten that a little bit more than your fingers can tighten that. That's usually enough that it's not gonna come loose. If you don't have anything like that, get a quarter or a dime or a very wide uh, slot, flathead, flathead screwdriver uh, to assure that's a little bit tighter. You don't have to really crank it down, but just tighter than your hands normally could. That really helps assure that this stays nice and tight so that your um, embroidery doesn't get sloppy. So. And then finally, um, my last bit of advice, uh, again, for new operators, um, is that when you mount your uh, hoop onto the machine as arms like this, um, always be aware that um, uh, whatever hoop you've got, whether it's a, a regular happy hoop like this, or whether it's a hoop tech clamp or whatever that's going to, whatever is going to mount onto these arms, look at these round um, screw heads right here. So these are what are called positioning pins. And what they have to do is snap into the round holes on the front corner of the brackets on the hoop. So when you slide your, uh, when you slide your uh, hoop onto the arms of the machine, so I'll start the, doing that here. So when you slide your hoop onto the arms of the machine, slide it until you can see that round hole is uh, snapped firmly around uh, that positioning pin, because if it's even off just a little bit, then you can see that's not there. Then this will have slop to move around and it won't line up. Uh, it'll move around. But if you have it snap in like that, then um, that's going to lock in. Your embroidery is going to be really precise as long as that's locked in on both sides. And again, your pantograph arm screws are tight. So, uh, and then one other bit of uh, advice that I would have uh, if you're new to orienting the machine is that when you have the arm onto the machine itself um, with the power off, don't do it with the power on. Um, so I'll just turn this off really quickly is that uh, you'll um, move your arm forward and back. Um, and what you're looking for is as you move it forward and back, make sure that, that the underside of the garment is dragging lightly onto the needle plate. If it's airborne at all, like, if it's up and you can see airspace between this and the bottom of the backing, then something's wrong. Um, it could be something as simple as, and I'm not laughing here because this happens, uh, especially if you've never seen the, the machine before, is that maybe it's been mounted upside down like this. And so now that this, this is up against the uh, bottom of the presser feet, and there's a lot of air between the fabric and uh, the needle plate, so that 
will cause looping. So just make sure you orient your um, hoop uh, so that it is the, the underside of the backing is dragging onto the uh, needle plate itself. So, so you want to move it through the entire range of motion. Just make sure everything's working. Most of your default happy um, um, hoops like this are going to do that automatically. But sometimes some of these clamps, um, other things, they need to be adjusted. And they may be riding a little bit high like this. And you'll want to adjust them. Adjust them again so that this is dragging like this. Um, and this will help assure that you have uh, good quality uh, sewing, uh, no matter what kind of attachment you put on your machine. So there's a lot that you can get into, but um, these are some good oper operating habits to keep in mind as you're running your machine. Uh, good maintenance, remember follow the oiling videos, keep this clean, uh, and that's all can be covered in depth. So I'm gonna leave the, um, uh, I'm going to leave it at that for these good operating basics. So for those of you who are, uh, are new, uh, this is a good starting point. Just make sure this is a checklist and then uh, we can move on from there. But I'll go ahead and just conclude this particular portion and then uh, we'll save this off for, uh, for later viewing.